In this video, I'm going to show you how to play Little Big Planet 3 on PC with the best settings for stability and performance, and how to add the backed up community levels, the same ones made back in the PS3 thanks to Little Big Archive. This is an updated version of my original video, now including more details on the setup process and the updated settings for this game now. Because of YouTube guidelines, you must obtain the game on your own by ripping your copy to the PC or selling the 7 Cs with Google. Let's get going. First thing we're gonna do is download the emulator itself. The link for this page will be on the description of this video. Right here where it says Windows, you're gonna click here in this button that says download for x64 next still here on this page you're going to scroll down a little bit where it says installing on windows and you're also going to download visual c plus plus and you can download this to the same place where you downloaded the emulator file too now with both files in place the first one you're going to run is vc plus plus so go ahead and double click on this file to start the installation there is a chance that you already have Visual C++ installed on your PC. If that's the case, you're going to see this window and it's going to say right here, modify installation. If that's the case for you, you can close this window. But if not, you're going to keep clicking where it says next somewhere around here and then proceed with the installation of this. And once it's done, you can close. And after that's done, you can delete the file, click on it and press shift delete your PC and then click on yes. Now for the emulator files, you're going to click on it with the right button of your PC and then click on extract all. This window will open up and all you have to do is click on extract. And as such, you can delete the original file as well. Now you're going to end up with a folder like this one. So go ahead and double click on it to open. And inside, you're going to see all of these files. And to start the emulator, you just have to double click on the RPCS3 application. There is a chance that Windows will say that this program is unrecognized and dangerous, but don't worry, it's safe. So go ahead and click on more info and then click on run anyway. Then you will see this window right here. Click on here where it says show at startup to get rid of that. Then click on I have read the quick start guide. And you can also disable the dark theme if you want to, that's up to you. And now you just click on continue. And after that, the emulator will start. The first thing we have to do here is install the PS3 firmware. And we can get that on the official Sony website, which is available right here. The link will be on the description of this video as well. So in here, you're going to scroll down a little bit. And where it says how to update PS3 system software, you're going to click on update using a computer. Then you just click on download PS3 update. And you're going to download this to the same RPCS3 folder. And there's a chance that this button doesn't work when you click on it. If that's the case, you're going to click on it with the right button of your mouse and then click on copy link address. And you're going to paste this link on your browser, delete, and then press Ctrl V to show up the link. Then you just press the enter button of your keyboard. And now you can download the firmware. Now back on the emulator. Now back on the emulator, you're going to click on file and then click on install firmware. It should open the emulator folder by default and you can already see the firmware file right here. In case this doesn't show up, then you're gonna go to the bottom right of the screen where it says PS3 update file and then change this to all files. And then you will see the firmware. In case this doesn't work, then you can simply drag and drop the firmware file to the emulator. But anyway, double click on it and the emulator will install it. Now I just have to wait for the compiling PPU modules window. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you must obtain the game on your own because of YouTube guidelines. I cannot show you here on the video how to do that because it's basically piracy and they will delete the video if you do that. So when you have the game files with you, you're going to go back to the emulator folder and you're going to see that there's this folder called games that was already created by the emulator. So double click on that. And this is where you're going to drop the game file for Little Big Planet 3. And depending where you got yours, there is a chance that it will be a ISO disk image file like this one. The emulator cannot read this file as it is, so we have to mount this ISO. 
And you can do this by extracting or you can mount it, which is what I'm going to do here. So right click on it and select the mount option. And then you should have these files right here with you. Now, what you're going to do is select everything on it. Press and hold the left button on your mouse and then right click, select copy. Now you're going to go back to the games folder of RPCS3 and you can simply paste these files right here and it will work. But what I'm going to do here is right click anywhere on this folder, select new and then click on folder. And you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it LBP3. Now, double click on this folder and then you're going to paste the files in here. This is just for keeping things organized so that you know where the game files are for later. With the files in place, you're going to go back to the emulator and just click on this refresh button and the game will appear. You can also restart the emulator as well. That works too. So if you see your game in here, then everything is working fine. You can delete the original ISO. But before deleting it, you have to eject the DVD drive of it. You can find it on the corner of your Windows Explorer. It's probably going to show up as two, so it doesn't matter which one you click. So just click on it with the right button and then click on eject. And go ahead and delete the original ISO. Now, you can see that the emulator will tell you that there is an update available for this game. And these are the same updates that the game had back on the PS3. So as such, it is very important that you update your game here on the emulator as well to get better performance and stability. And one way to grab the updates is by using this program called Rusty PSN. I'll put the link of this page on the description of the video as well. You're going to check whatever is the latest update available. Then you're going to click here on Assets. And the file you're going to download for Windows is this one, Rusty PSN Windows.zip. You can download this to anywhere on your PC, but I'm just going to download it to the same emulator folder just to keep things organized. Now back on the emulator folder, the file should be here on the bottom. We have to extract it. So right click on it once again, and then click on Extract All, and then select Extract. You can delete the original file now. And you're going to locate the Rusty PSN folder. There's only one single file inside it that is Rusty PSN itself. Double click on it to start. Now in here, the first thing you're going to do is click on this little gear right here so that we can change the download location of the patches. In this settings window, click on pick folder. It should open the emulator folder by default. If not, you can select anywhere on your PC. But in this case, I'm just going to pick the same Rusty PSN folder we came up with. So click on it once and then click on Select Folder. Now select Save Settings. To download the updates for any game you have, you're going to go back on the emulator and you're going to copy this serial code right here. So right click on the game, select Copy Info, then click on Copy Serial. Now go back to Rusty PSN. Click on this box here and press Ctrl V. Then click on search for updates. And just like that, Rusty PSN will get all the updates available for your game. In the case of Little Big Planet 3, it is best to download every update the game has. It's 4.5 gigabytes in total, so this might take a while depending on your internet. But go ahead and click on download all and just wait for the downloads to finish. When everything is done downloading, you're going to go back to the emulator and at the top, click on file and then click on install packages. It should open the emulator folder once again. Then you're just going to double click on the Rusty PSN folder and inside there's going to be a folder with the name of the game. Click on that and the updates. For Little Big Planet 3, for whatever reason, there is an issue that happens if you try to install all the updates in order by just highlighting everything. And one way to avoid that from happening is to install the first update of the game once and then install everything else. So here in this folder, I want you to locate on your PC the update that says A0101. It should be at the bottom like this one. So you're going to install the first update for everything else. Now double click on it and it will show up on the emulator as 1.01. Then go ahead and click on yes. This one should be pretty quick. Click on OK, and now you're going to repeat the process. Select File, Install Packages, and now you can select everything with the exception of the first update. 
So press and hold the left button on your mouse. Highlight everything except the bottom one. Then you can press enter on your keyboard or just select open at the bottom. And there you go. All the updates should be in order by now and they have to be in order for it to work. And then you just click on install. This one should take a little longer, but don't worry. The emulator will tell you that the game is on version 1.26. The next thing we're going to do is tweak the emulator settings to give us the best performance and stability in this game. And there are two things we're going to do. The game patches of the emulator and the actual settings. We're going to start with the game patches. And to go there, you're going to right click the game and select this option, manage game patches. When you click on it for the first time, it's going to tell you that there are new patches available. Go ahead and click on yes. And like that, the name of the game will appear. So double click on it once, double click on 1.26. In this game, the only patch that helps with performance is disable MLAA. And this will also allow for resolution scale to be used. That is increasing the resolution of the game to make it look better. We're going to get that in a bit, but you can also disable motion blur if you want to. That's optional. And also the score bubble effects. So it's going to be up to you. I'm just going to go ahead with these two patches. When you're done, click on apply and then save. Now let's tweak the actual emulator settings. Click on the game once again with the right button and then click on create custom configuration. For the CPU tab, you don't have to change anything. The same goes for the GPU tab. But under the GPU tab, we have the resolution options. And if you want to increase the game's resolution to make it look better, you're going to keep the default resolution at 720p. Do not change this. And you're going to use the resolution scale option. But of course, increasing the resolution of the game will require more of your GPU. So it's best to start the game with the default resolution after you're done configuring everything and then check if the game is working okay and if the performance is okay as well. But if you are changing the resolution to anything other than 100%, you have to change the scale threshold as well. And the value that you need to change here is one by one. You can just press and hold the left button on your mouse on the slider and bring it down to this one. But remember, this is only if the resolution scale is different than 100%. If that's not the case, then click on reset for both options. You can, however, play the game at default resolution and make it look better by changing the output scaling right here to Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1. It does give you a good result in terms of image quality, and you can change how it will look in game by moving the slider right here. Personally, I like keeping this one at 40% when I'm playing the games with default resolution. But this one is going to be up to you. You can just start playing the game with the default and see how the game looks. Next, head over to the Advanced tab. And the only option you have to change here is Read Color Buffers. Turn this one on. Also, this is optional, but I also like going here to the Emulator tab and disable the Show Shader Compilation Hint option. Because this is something that the emulator will do constantly. And every time it's doing that, you're going to get a notification on the bottom left side of the screen. So it can be annoying. I just like turning this one off. That's it for the settings. When you're done, click on apply and then save custom configuration. For adding the backed up community levels of the PS3 version of the game, the website is this one, a little big archive. The link will be on the description. And in here, the first thing you're going to do is click here where it says main games, select little big planet three. And under the downloads, the first option, community level packs. All you have to do is just click on the download button. And I'm going to recommend you to download this to the emulator folder. When it's done downloading, go back to the emulator folder and the file should be at the bottom. This is a zip one, so right click on it, select extract all, and extract once again. When it's done, you can delete the original file as always. And now we have to move the levels to a specific folder on the emulator. So just follow me here on how to do this. Double click on the levels archive folder. We got to be another folder inside because of how we extracted it. And then you're going to double click on the PS3 folder, save data. And inside we have the files for all the levels. So what you're going to do here is copy all of these folders. One way to copy everything is to click on these three dots right here. Then click on select all. 
Then you can press Ctrl C on your keyboard or you can just right click in any of these folders and then click on the copy option. Now you're going to go back to the main emulator folder, the ones with all of these files, right? Now the location where these files are going to go to is this one. Double click on the dev hdd0 folder. Double click on the home folder. This folder with a bunch of numbers. This one that says save data. And this is the place right here. So now you can just press Ctrl V on your keyboard or you can right click on it and select paste. And just wait until the copying process is finished. This might take a while depending if you're using a SSD or not. But either way, when it's done, all the files are in place. Just like on the PS3, we have to start the game to actually import them into the game. So we're going to do that later. Next up, we're going to configure the controller on the emulator or your keyboard if you're going to play with that. So you just have to click here on this pads option and this window will open up. And this emulator supports pretty much all the controllers out there from PlayStation and Xbox and even unofficial third party controllers as well. So if you don't have your controller plugged in on your PC right now, Go ahead and do that and right here where it says handlers you're going to click on keyboard and you'll see the options of the controllers supported if you're using a official playstation controller that is dualshock 3 4 or ps5 it has to be official by the way you just have to click on the one you have in here but if you're using a xbox controller or a third party controller then the option i'm going to recommend you is x input which is my case here. I do have a Xbox controller, so this is the one I'm going to pick. And as you can see, the emulator has done the mapping for me. You should see your device showing up here, depending on the name, and you're pretty much ready to go. But if you want to change any individual inputs, you just have to click on the button you want to change and then press the button you want to use or your controller. And that's pretty much it for controller configuration. But if you're going to play with the keyboard, it was already configured to that. But you just have to click on it and select keyboard. And that's it. When you're done, click on save. And we are finally ready to start the game. And to do that, you just have to double click on the game once. You're going to see this option here. This is like the digital manual of the game. It doesn't really matter. So go ahead and click on no. And on the first time you start the game, the emulator is going to do this compiling PPU modules option. You only have to do this for the first time you start the game. And this might take a little while depending on how good your CPU is. So you just have to wait here until this is done. If the game crashes after compiling the PPU modules, it could be two things. Either the game files is corrupted, which means that you're going to have to grab it from a different place, or your PC specs are not strong enough to run the game on the emulator. When a game starts to go full screen, you can either double click the screen or press Alt and enter on your keyboard. For this game specifically, you have to configure the display size right here. So don't forget to actually fit this one to the monitor of your PC. Otherwise, you're going to get black sidebars. For importing the community levels we got, the process is the same as in the PS3. In the games menu, click on pod computer, select create, my moon. And then you just select any of these pots, click on more, and then choose the import option. And just like that, you will see all the community levels we backed up. So just pick the one you want to play and select yes. There is a good chance, however, that on the first time you try to play the level, it will give you a arrow, and that is normal. Usually on the second try, it works, but if not, you just keep on retrying until it goes through, like this one here. I'm just going to going to try this one again and see if it goes through. And there you go. It worked this time. I have many other tutorial videos like this on the channel. So if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff. Subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you soon.